I need to learn how to twerk like Anora. Howdy, folks, and welcome back to the Pink Eye Weekly Show thing podcast, whatever, where I talk about movies sometimes one, two, three, four. This time I'm going to be talking about Anora. And to give myself a little bit of background, because you don't know who I am, I'm Sergio Javier Valverde. I'm a Mexican filmmaker. I like movies. I talk about them. And this isn't really a review slash critic channel or video series type of thing. I love movies. I love making them. And I'm going to talk about them in a positive manner because I don't want to risk being blackballed by the industry. And I like a lot of these filmmakers and I want to talk about them and talk to them about their films but right now <laughs> i just talked about this fucking film for like 20 minutes and i didn't realize that my audio wasn't connected to the camera so it's like whoop all of that's gone so let me start from the beginning nora is fantastic please go go watch it i'm gonna spoil the fuck out of it but to start off with sean baker the, the writer director who has made films tangerine red rocket florida project and unfortunately the only one i've watched is florida project but with just that i just have so much confidence in sean baker delivering as a as an amazing fucking artist and director who manages to capture such a human essence and humanizes sex workers he humanizes these people in different classes who aren't noticed by society who aren't noticed by so many tentpole films who aren't like a focus in many many films and just humanizes in such a way that it's so empathetic and so beautiful it's so endearing and i really really admire sean baker and how he not purposely goes out of his way to humanize uh these people but he just sees people as people and his films see people as people with flaws with contradictions with all of these things with complexities with all of these beautiful mannerisms that humanity encompasses and sean baker just sees that and his films just portray that in such a beautiful way that he has done so many times especially in the florida project you know and with anora it's just another presentation of just a uh, aspect of humanity that people don't think about that people don't empathize with regularly because Anora is a sex worker she's a stripper who works at a strip club and she's good at her job she she does what she has to in order to pay the bills just as any other person does so sex work is such a <sighs> sex work is such a fucking it, it's it's viewed as such a like despicable like oh i bet you have an only fans yada yada type of thing you know everyone just bullies people who participate and do sex work and then turn around and participate in buying the sex work so it's such a hypocritical stance to say oh sex workers don't deserve you know money or job security or health care because they're doing this evil nasty thing that should only be reserved with a partner blah 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 and this bullshit you know so this film that and sean baker and everyone behind the project just kind of just approaches these people i just people and the nora is such a beautiful representation of that and mikey who i absolutely adore and i feel disrespectful but i don't remember her last name but she is just fascinating i hope to meet and potentially work with her one day she's fucking fantastic i admire the way she approaches her characters i've seen her in smaller roles like scream like uh once upon a time in hollywood and i'm trying to remember another one that I i've seen her in but I, I can't recall right now but she is fantastic in what she does she's a beautiful artist she portrays an aura with all of her complexities and this weird relationship she has with the other lead in the film who only sees her as a distraction as a form of pleasure of a form of like 
just having fun and doesn't really see her as a person so there's this conversation of you know of class divide since he's this rich russian oligarch business person thing and she's just a stripper a sex worker and this fucking video is gonna be blown through hell <laughs> by the fucking algorithm but because i say sex so much but it's it's also another another struggle with like these films with you know anything having to do with any type of sex work it's not viewed as a profession it's not viewed as a you know a a, a decent uh, as a as a thing that people should go to you know it's it's seen as like a, 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 a oh you can't do anything else so you resort to selling yourself selling your body and these really demeaning conversations about what it means to be a woman in a sex obsessed society in a in this like country and world that just sees women as sexual objects and then gets mad because women decide to take that into their own hands and make profit off of it so it's interesting in that aspect and this film doesn't touch on that particularly it's like this it's this like meta meta contextual layer that you know you can observe and you can talk about it but i'm gonna try to talk a bit more about Honora as a character because she portrays such a beautiful complexity that every human being has she's not perfect of god no not a single person in any of sean baker's films are perfect and that's what i love about him and his work and the way that mikey portrays anora is that anora is fucked up she has issues she you know she has to be a certain type of person to be able to work in a sex environment in being in a strip club of and being surrounded by potentially other women who see her as competition and we do see that a little bit in the film and this conversation of men seeing women as objects seem lesser and she's constantly surrounded by people who do see her lesser who see her as just like a obstacle as a distraction as a form of pleasure as that this this weird objectification of women and this film certainly has a conversation with that a little bit and I, it, it certainly does and i think sean baker is such a unique filmmaker in how he is able to tell stories about women in such a a in such a manner that isn't entirely pandering isn't entirely you know what's the word that isn't entirely <sighs> look i'm i'm also masculine presenting so it's difficult for me to talk about this in in such a sense because i don't think i have the capacity right now because i'm still processing the film to be able to talk about this in 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 a in a in a, in a very effective manner but i really admire his strengths as a writer and director in just not just portraying women in the male gaze and of course i i listened to a few interviews of him talking about this about the male gaze the female gaze and how this film does certainly use the male gaze because she is a sex worker she is in a strip club and she is a stripper who is using her her sexual attraction as a form of currency as a way to make a living as a way to survive and how other characters throughout the film do see her as and then we start to peel these layers a bit further and throughout the film and explore her in this very very interesting character study of Anora who is just kind of she's just trying to find some peace and happiness because I don't imagine that anybody really wants to be a stripper for the rest of their lives 
you know, unfortunately, whenever you get into any type of sex work, you are valued by how youthful you look in a very gross way. The younger you are, the more attractive you are to certain predators. And those predators usually do pay the big bucks. So if you're like 30 or 40 or 50, some of these people see you as lesser, as less valuable, as less sexually attractive or, or in, in these strange ideas of age, of youth, of sex, of how men just kind of objectify and put their own beliefs and thoughts and place them onto the woman as if it's their responsibility to look pretty, to look sexy, to look X, Y, and Z. So it's, I don't know where I was going with it, but <sighs> holy shit, I lost myself. But Honora is incredibly fantastic. But there is this interesting, okay, let me talk about this real quick. There is this, <laughs> there's this bit in the, in the film where in one scene, uh, the Russian guy, he, he's playing with a PlayStation controller and we cut to the screen and he's playing Gears of War. Now I'm a nerd. I know what Gears of War is. I love Gears of War. And it's of course very poignant in like how he portrays masculinity and this and that. Because Gears of War is a very masculine, like very macho, like I'm a guy, I'm gonna shoot things and beat the fuck out of things. And, and it's this very, very like tough, very macho f video game that you just end up killing a bunch of people you beat the fuck out of them with your like hands and stuff and then and, and it's really interesting how that character is playing that game and then we see him playing with a playstation controller and he is just it's weird like you gotta have someone who's knowledgeable because he's like pressing the aiming button and also shooting like that and it's like this weird like that's not how you play the game man but then it cuts back and then he's using an xbox controller which i found really funny because it's just like oh you know one day they shot this other this beginning part of the scene and he's using a playstation controller and then they show gears of war and then someone behind the scenes is like oh hey by the way gears of war is only on xbox and so they the the, the following scene where he where he's playing the game he's using an xbox controller now but i just thought that was funny i thought that was like uh someone probably told him that like oh hey you know the, the, they don't play that on the playstation but moving on that's a little thing um i don't know it's such there's so many characters throughout the film but i'm gonna try to, to explore some of it because Every character in this film does see her as lesser, as 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 a thing, you know. Almost every person in this film sees her as, as a thing. There's only, I believe, two people who don't see her as that. One of the Russian dudes, I don't believe, I don't know if he was Russian, but the bald guy in the film, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta really remember these names but the bald guy and her best friend there's only two people in this entire or actually there might be two more i don't know there there are some people in the strip club the management who who do see her as like oh yeah this is my peer this is someone i care about and, and yada yada and so that is kind of nice i don't know if that kind of adds to the narrative of like Oh, these are also people who see her as a human being and not just like someone to make them money. But we don't really see much of them that often. But there are two major characters or minor characters, I guess, uh, supporting cast who who do see her as a person who do kind of try to respect her, who do try to be there for her. And there is, especially with the other bald guy who does see her as a person with feelings and complexities and you know can't believe this is a fucking this is happening <laughs> uh 
and you kind of see it throughout the film on how he kind of has a liking to her. She's like this very New York, very aggressive, very like don't fuck with me kind of attitude that uh, that that is really respectable and admir admirable in how she handles a lot of these situations because she is always trying to just survive. That's kind of her default throughout the entire fucking film. And we follow that. And by the time we come to the end, we see this guy kind of just treat her with some kindness. And her, I guess, reaction or answer to that is sex. Because that is the work that she does. That's how she communicates through sex. And there is a moment earlier in the film where she's having sex with the rich Russian guy that she says let me take over let's go slower and that was a really important piece where towards the end we also see her have sex with the other guy and she goes slower it's more intimate and we see her want to crave this intimacy to crave love because what human being doesn't want to be loved who does what human being doesn't want to be cared for and caressed and loved and touched in such a personal and, and caring way you know you enter this contract physically with another person and of course you don't want them to treat you as just like a sexual you know thing that you just kind of fucking forget and I know a lot of I don't know it's it's interesting with especially the the world of porn and oh boy this is gonna get like demonetized to hell but how porn portrays sex as well how it's very much male gaze and porn how it's only serving men and there's very rarely any moments where women are cared for who are treated who are you know gone down on and it's it has a very interesting conversation with sex how we communicate with sex how human beings kind of connect with each other with sex and I'm there I don't know I might have a sex counter on the screen I don't know I've said it so many times but it is in a very, very interesting conversation about sex, about what that means with people, what that means with sex workers, and how we evaluate such a thing, how we think about it, how we talk about it. Because it isn't a shameful thing. It's a, everyone does it, you know? Everyone shits the same, everyone pees the same, everyone has sex, you know? And... It's not a shameful act, even though it's portrayed, even though the film doesn't portray it as a, as a shameful act, it, it, it there is certain demographics that do see it as this puritanical thing, you know? It, I, I don't think I use that word right, but there is this puritanical society where sex is like a, oh, don't talk about it, don't look at it, don't don't oh no boobies oh no ass oh no penises oh no and sean baker just kind of throws it all throws it all out there and i really admire that and i really really respect all the actors who are willing to portray that aspect because it isn't really a sec uh, a shameful thing you know, people complain about there being, you know, oh, too many titties on the screen or too many dicks on the screen. Honestly, there's there's not enough penises on the screen. We need to see more penises being thrown out there. I'm, oh God, I'm just thinking about it. My mother watches my fucking videos and she's going to just hear me talk about sex this entire time. Um, I love you, mother. Uh, I hope you enjoy the video <laughs> but uh, it, it is an interesting conversation to be had because it is you know people portray sex as such a bad thing as a like 
don't do it or don't look at it but we aren't treating it as a as a as a process as a as a sort of you know this is the thing that happens you know everyone does it everyone eventually does it um and we kind of shy away from it we don't look at it we don't talk about it and it needs to be talked about and it it and sex should be taught well not taught but like you know what i mean <laughs> you know uh, uh health class you know you know they teach us about the organs about this and that about how people get pregnant about how it works and stuff and you know sometimes a little bit awkward the birds and the bees but it's a necessary conversation for us to be prepared about when we come with a person that we care for that we like enough that to be intimate with and so it's incredibly important to be able to be comfortable enough to talk about these things to talk about the reality of it you know and how we can move forward with like a healthier more positive conversation about it because it's not a sin it's not a shameful thing you know and i keep saying it but it needs to be like repeated like there's so much out there of this like red pill content of just people being like don't look at porn porn makes you weak sex makes you weak don't look at them uh, work out yada yada and it's like dog you're talking about women being objects about women only wanting money about women women only being you know useful for sex or services or cleaning and shit like that and you're just a fucking coward it's like that's what it is it's just cowardice it's cowardice to you know and insecurity as well and at a certain point you can try to empathize with these people but when they constantly 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 shell out these types of shitty ass videos about oh women are bad yada yada you can't you know you can't you, you you can't empathize with people who are constantly demonizing women for having sex for being attractive for wanting to be uh, you know to wanting to feel attracted to wanting to feel wanted you know because we are human beings we want to be wanted we want to be loved we want to be seen as attractive sexy by someone who we in turn are attracted to by by someone who we in turn love and anora just kind of talks about all of that in such a beautiful manner and it just goes ham at it it does not shy away with it and it's so fucking good it's so fucking good and it's so charming every single performer in this film just delivers their lines and just the the way they portray their characters is just incredibly charming even though a lot of these people are kind of pieces of shit they are still really likable which is so interesting because every single person in this film is just incredibly incredibly shitty and they're all mostly likable there's a couple who i was like ooh you son of a bitch i want you to fucking die <laughs> okay maybe not that extreme but uh it's so so like what a perfect like this script is just fantastic i need to read it to really understand how people can how Sean Baker just kind of writes people how he can make someone so shitty be so likable and so charming and so funny but also be just a massive piece of shit that you just kind of like mm, I want to strangle you and he he manages to do this in such a way that kind of at the end of it there are certain people that you can be like oh yeah you're a piece of shit you deserve whatever 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 but he also manages to redeem a lot of certain people to that were kind of thrown to the side and being treat like being portrayed as like a, a certain type of way in the beginning and i 
that's incredibly impressive it's so hard to do that to have someone be such a piece of shit in the beginning and then by the end of it you're kind of like oh he's not he's not that bad you know he's kind of chill mm-hmm. oh fuck but it's so 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 moving this film and it's just i don't know what to say more about it because he's it, when you when you try to explore these types of worlds these types of characters these these types of sex work it, it it's it can become so difficult to kind of you know we're fed so much propaganda about sex work being bad about this being bad about you know it being a shameful sinful act and just kind of being able to write human beings that participate in sex work who contribute to sex work who are sex workers as just normal human beings and sean baker just is able to do in such a way that just kind of reminds you that people are just people and sometimes people fuck up sometimes people make mistakes sometimes people are really shitty but people can always be better everyone is trying to survive and everyone's trying to do what they think is best sometimes what they think is best is harmful to others and as long as they are able to recognize the harm they're enacting then maybe we can redeem them and i think it's an incredibly beautiful film i really want to watch it again if it continues to play in my theater for more than one week please dear god sean baker i need to see it again and i hope i get a chance to see it in film uh, because it's beautifully composed. The music choices are just fantastic. I love seeing Daddy AF <laughs> in the fucking credits. It's so funny. I don't know why, but it, it, it's, it's just a fantastic film. Every piece in every choreographed set piece is just fantastic. Every choice, every decision is just, it makes me incredibly, incredibly know it inspires me so much it just makes me want to co write some more you know so please 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 do yourself a favor go watch it my name has been Sergio Javier Valverde you have been watching Pink Guy Weekly Show podcast thing whatever 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 where I talk about movies this time it's only been one because I am tired and I only want to talk about Nora because Nora deserves love Nora deserves to be seen by everyone and Nora is incredibly incredibly beautiful i don't know what more to say um i got a short film coming out i do so go check it out it's dropping this coming saturday so and if you're from houston texas or the houston area I got a screening you're welcome to show up to. Uh, I don't think anybody's parasocial enough to be weird. So, hey, pull up. (laughs) Uh, Go follow my social, subscribe, like, do the things. I really appreciate it. It makes me really happy. It gives me a boost in my dopamine that makes me like, oh, it works. Um, So, thank you very much. I'm going to do a couple faces for the thumbnail to just be like so let me just do that real quick okay actually let me like what what other faces can i make what other faces can i make uh
don't know what the fuck I'm doing anymore, dude. I am losing my mind. Okay, uh, one more. Also, one last thing. I need to learn how to twerk like Anora. I need to learn how to twerk like Anora. Thank you for watching.